What does assessment do? This is a one school for all lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, for my wonderful international students um, and in uh, the Nordic Citizenship Education course at Estoy University College, uh, which I want you to watch by um, Tuesday, the 7th of September, when we next meet. So we've just kind of concluded our philosophical discussion yesterday um, with the question, um, how do we assess children without giving them grades? And I guess the um, underlying assumption of that question is, it's a really good question, uh, but the assumption is um, when we assess, what we're doing is explaining to the child how good they are. Now, the assessment for learning um, revolution that I'm going to try to explain to you um, are a couple of motivations for that in this, mo um, in this lecture is um, a different assumption. Um, and the assumption is that what assessment does is it tells teachers what they need to know so that they can design their teaching, their instruction. They, because teachers need to know what pupils can and can't do. Yeah. And, and that's true of uh, nursery as well. You can't take um, your children on a, um, on a trip um, for further, which is further away than they are able to walk. Um, and you can only take them on a cycling trip once they're all able to cycle. So, so um, that form of assessment will tell the and teachers what they need to know. But also, um, it tells pupils not how good they are, but what aspects of their work is good and what is bad. Um, so that they don't think that the good stuff is actually bad and so throw away. And so when if they get a bad mark, for example, they throw away the stuff in their um, in, in their work, which was actually good, the only redeeming feature of that work. So it explains to the children not how good they are, but which bits were good. And those are the two things. Now, there are two major motivations for this, uh, for this movement, kind of two and a half major motivations um, for this. And, um, and they're to do with justice, the feeling of justice, and they're to do with educational research. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about those two um, in, this, in this video. So um, what, what is assessment for? One of the, um, one of the experiences that, were, um, that, that were, was going on before the assessment for learning uh, experience was this feeling of injustice. And that's why a lot of assessment learn for learning has taken place at the level of laws, as you can see here. Um, yeah. um, um, there, are, there are new laws being written about assessment that pupils have certain rights. Because one of the experiences was that the pupil in, um, has it in a piece of work and, and the teacher had said, write a piece of writing. And the pupil thought they were going to be assessed um, in terms of one thing, say, for example, the accuracy of their description of the Lord of the Rings. Um, and, um, and then they get, so they hand it in, in in good faith, and then they get the piece of work back from the teacher. And it turns out the teacher was not interested in the Lord of the Rings whatsoever, and they purely were interested in the paragraph structure that they've been using. So what you thought was an amazing description of the Lord of the Rings, because it wasn't, uh, didn't pay that much attention to paragraphs, maybe you got so excited about it all, um, it didn't get a good mark. Uh, because all the good things that you did with that piece of writing were not acknowledged by the teacher. Because what we do when we take in, uh, when we when we give pieces of work into our teacher is we work on them here, and the teacher is able to do whatever they like to assess them however we like, um, and what and and the situ and that just feels that just feels unfair. We sometimes call it the gotcha effect. Um, you thought I was going to assess you in one thing, turns out I'm going to assess you in another, and. And that's actually being prevented by law in Norway now. Um, pupils ha now have a right to understand how you are going to assess their work, uh, which is why um, when we have exams, when we have pieces of writing, I have to give you assessment criteria. I have to explain to you what is the characteristic of good work and what it is that characterizes bad work. Um, so that I not only tell you what to do, but I also explain to you um, what what you need to do in order to in order to get a good mark. Um, so it's in many ways it's taking the assessment role away from the um, from being a purely teacher thing and saying 
you have to be in order to actually do the work in the first place you have to be good at assessing in order to do good work you need to be able to recognize good work and that is a um, a, a change and, and initially in 2010 the um the assessment um, rules were changed and from 2007 until uh, quite recently um, the the government had been um, doing courses that teachers would take all over Norway and um, so that everyone knows a little bit more about assessment than they did 15 years ago okay so that's the first one that's the feeling of injustice the second one um, is all about um, is all about pedagogical research um, we start off um, and, and, and it comes from this black box idea. We can see um, what we are putting into school and then what we're getting out of school is good and bad results. But what we really want to do is open up that box and see what it is that's inside, what are the mechanisms inside a school and the ones that produce good, um, good results and which mechanisms produce bad results. And that's why um, the, the most important, uh, well, one, one of the big um, pieces of writing on this uh, uses this metaphor of getting inside the black box. And this is the Black and William um, article that I have um, put on your reading list. So there was both Black and William um, who said we're going to get inside the black box and find out what it is that makes for good results. But also the work of John Hattie, who you may have heard of from New Zealand, um, who analysed um, 800 different meta-analyses and each meta-analysis was based on lots of different individual um, research projects. And both of them found, and there's been increasing number of uh, research that finds that what is most effective for teaching, what allows pupils to learn most, is discussing the pupils' work, um, discussing what what about their work was good, when they, they when they were being clever, when they were being relaxed and, and or lazy or whatever. Um, but what is it that characterizes good work? So that pupils um, can work up their own strategies so that they can recognize when they've done work themselves instead of doing a piece of work, throwing it in and saying, I have no idea what mark I'm going to get. Okay, so so the first one was a, a feeling of injustice and the second one was all about research in um, in um, into education and finding out what teachers can do um, to um, to improve the learning experience and that generates then the four principles um, in uh, which have which have stood um, in Norway's um, assessment revolution uh, where first pupils and apprentices must understand what they are learning and what is expected of them. So that's the gotcha effect that I talked about. Instead of um, them writing something and not knowing what is expected of them, now they must know what, um, what is expected of them. And they must get feedback that tells them about the quality of their work. Of their work. And that's the second thing I talked about. These conversations about quality are um, really important. No niceness, no, oh, you are really clever, or I have great thoughts about, no, uh, about you. No, work-related feedback. Um, and thirdly, um, pupils and apprentices must get advice on improvement. So they must say, uh, you, they need to know, this is how far you've got. This is the natural next step. I see you've managed good paragraphs. Perhaps you need to be adding good quotations, for example. And fourthly, they must be involved in their own learning. That's what I say about them. This this assessment role being um, taken over by by pupils by assessing their own work and, and development. So once they have uh, once they understand what is expected of them, they should be able to assess their own work and um, try something out and then be able to say, well, I like what I did there. I like what I did there. I think I need to improve this bit and get rid of that aspect there. OK, so those are the four principles and we can discuss them more in class. I said two and a half um, motivations. I guess um, the, uh, the third one um, is, um, is something to do with this is this seems to be very typical of our culture that um, with a, a free market um, democracy, um, people are allowed to try out what they what they want. Um, but then the, the where the rubber hits the road, there has to be some kind of competition um, and some kind of assessment of what they've um, of what they've tried out. Um, something some feedback loops that work in our society. So we've got this research based and legal and developmental um, revolution in assessment for learning in Norway. 
And, um, and I have no doubt you've noticed there are similarities between assessment for learning and special needs education, i.e. this analysis of what is going on in the pupil and then um, uh, some kind of development measures to improve the situation. But that's partially because it resembles a lot of what's going, what goes in our society, um, because um, our society is a kind of laissez-faire society. We don't want too much regulation. We don't want too much state involvement in our lives. We want people to be able to look after themselves. And of course, when people look after themselves, they don't have to be looked after quite so much by the state. Self-regulation is key. It's key for education. It's key for society, which is good for future life. It's good for pupil independence. It's good for becoming ourselves. Um, assuming that people can look after themselves freely, it's also very cheap.